What's up you guys? All right, well, I am beside myself. Uh, it's so crazy right now because I honestly, when I sit down each day, I have, I just don't know what to expect. I, I don't wanna sit down and have the expectation that, you know, I, I'm gonna try to make $50,000 in one day. That's, has that happened a few times in the last couple weeks? Yes, but it seems outrageous. It's a, it's a crazy amount of money and yet, if the market is really volatile, it can happen. And so I, I just kind of sit down each day not really knowing what to set, set as my expectation. And so today when we had uh, four or five stocks gapping up over 100%, I was just like, all right, here we go. This is gonna be a crazy day. And it was. Today was the best day of my trading career. And it, it feels like 10 years in the making to be able to be at a place in my trading where I was able to capitalize on the opportunities um, that we had. So it's a good idea to stop and you know what? Smell the roses. And really be grateful for the incredible opportunity that we have as traders to trade the markets, to work from home. Regardless of COVID-19, I've been able to come into work every single day from the comfort of my you know little uh, office there and, and it's it's phenomenal I, I love doing this during this recap I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, why I don't think I'm the best trader out there why how I know that there's other people out there who have certainly made more than me during this period of time I mean there's no question about it but rather than compare myself to other people I want to be grateful for what I have and so for you out there you know I do these recaps they're educational. I, I do these recaps because I want you guys to be at a place where you're able to really learn from how I'm trading and why I'm trading the stocks I'm trading, where I'm getting in, where I'm getting out, and those types of things. But I don't want you to just compare yourself to me in terms of, oh man, Ross made so much money. And I don't want these videos to make you feel bad about yourself. I want you to be grateful for what you got. And if you were able to walk away today with a little bit of profit, give yourself a pat on the back straight from me. So it's coming this way. There it is. All right, you got it. Uh, because, you know, you're capitalizing on the opportunity. And that's what this is all about. So for those that do want to learn a little bit more, uh, tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern, after I finish trading, I'm going to host a live workshop. And during that workshop, I'm going to break down for you how I find the stocks that I trade every single day. And I'm going to share with you uh, my favorite setup, the setup that I use almost every single day, I use it a bunch of times today, to get into these stocks in order to minimize my risk as much as possible, knowing that day trading is risky, but I want to minimize that risk and maximize my potential. So there'll be a link right down there for you to register. Those of you guys watching this maybe six months from now, maybe a year from now, because this is still the biggest green day that I've ever had, $224,000, it's insane. Um, that it's, it's almost enough to, I mean, you could buy a house with that amount of money. It's really crazy. But in any case, um, I will make that workshop available. So you can uh, click the link right down there and it'll give you uh, the opportunity to watch a replay of either that workshop or one of the newest workshops that I've taught. So make sure you check out that link right down there in the description. Even if, even if you're watching this six, eight, 10 months or, or 10 years from now, who knows where the market will be. And I encourage you guys just to, you know, take a breath, be grateful for the opportunity. The market is insane right now. Try not to get caught up too much in um, in the hype and just you know still still capitalize on the momentum, you know, without falling victim to it too much. So getting out of the office is important. I try to get out of the office, and well, that's one of the things I really like about the space that I'm working in now. My old office is. Um, it's kind of in a small room and there's like a small window, but I really don't see outside at all. So I think when I was trading in that office, I would sometimes just get so fixated on my monitors that I would, I would get frustrated and I would just get into this zone where I'd get myself more and more and more frustrated. Whereas now that I'm trading um, from home, I'm able to get out, walk, feel the ground and sort of say, all right, you know what? Maybe I didn't make as much as I could have today, which is true, because you're never gonna have a day where you make the absolute most you could possibly make. You could always do better. But and, you know, as traders, we're competitive with ourselves many times to do better, do better, do better, to be able to just be grateful for, for what you have. So I encourage you guys to adopt that practice, take a breath, be grateful for what you have. We'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. 
Live watch list streaming right around 9 a.m. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, hit the thumbs up button, and register for the workshop that'll be tomorrow at 1 p.m. All right, enjoy the recap. I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. All right, you guys, so we're gonna do a, a, a quick recap of today's trades. Finishing the morning up $224,397.91, which makes it the best day of my trading career. It's kind of hard right now to have any real expectation of what is normal. Uh, this is not normal, this is crazy. The market that we're in is not normal, it's crazy. Yesterday, UONE, uh, went from, as you can see here, $5 to over $40 a share. Now, I heard people commenting on social media that they made $250,000. I, I heard someone say they made half a million dollars trading this stock. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know how much other people really make. It's, it's impossible to know. I try not to really listen and pay that much attention. But the fact is, this stock was bananas. It was totally crazy. And um, just like that, that by itself can kind of start the next round of FOMO. I missed this. I missed this whole move yesterday afternoon. I stopped trading at like 11 a.m. So this whole move, I missed. Now, you guys in the chat room who traded it, uh, I'm proud of you guys for knowing the correct entry points, being able to understand and see these setups, this long here, this little setup right here. And for those that were able to be profitable, good job for managing your risk. I know it wasn't probably the easiest ones with, with uh, bigger spreads, but really good job. I have to reiterate to you guys, no one should be blindly following me. Now, when you're trading the simulator, when you're practicing, it's gonna be very common that we're trading the same stock. In fact, when you're trading real money, it's gonna be common. Well, that's a no-brainer. This is the leading stock in the entire market. It's the one that every day trader should be watching if they're trying to maximize account growth. So it's fine if we're trading the same stock, but I don't want you blindly following me. It's not a recipe for success. Just blindly following someone, you're always gonna be behind. You're never gonna really understand why I got in where I got in. You're gonna, your losses are gonna end up being bigger than mine because you're not in as, in as in at as good of a price. And it's just not gonna work. So I really wanna encourage you. I know there's FOMO in the market right now. I know there's that tendency to just say, you know what, screw it, I'm just jumping in. And I want you to try to really control that as much as you can and use the live chat room and the live feeds that I do as an opportunity to learn. It's a classroom and the class right now is in session Monday through Friday starting at 9 a.m. And we've had some really amazing lessons. We've really, I've learned a lot from this market. The new strategy that I've been implementing of buying dips came right out of the market dropping 35%. If that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have this new strategy that I'm using right now. And if I didn't have this new strategy, I wouldn't be able to start taking starter positions at such great entry prices and then have the confidence to go from a 5,000 share starter on a dip into a 10,000, 15 or 20,000 share breakout trade with a great cost basis. I had a couple of trades today on uh, Carve that were absolutely unreal. I mean, just almost picture perfect. Uh, we had the break of the VWAP right here. So on this one, uh, I jumped in this with 10,000 shares for the break of 17. It went from $17 all the way up to 19, that's 20,000 bucks. First pullback right here, I got back in and added on that dip, buying 8,000 shares on the dip, adding into the breakouts. Max sh uh, share size today was probably around 17,000 shares, maybe. I, I didn't go higher than 20,000 for sure. Um, so the thing with Carve is that, that it's not marginable. There's no margin on it. So many of you guys know at the beginning of this month, I reset this margin account down to $50,000. It had $50,000 in it at the beginning of the month. Uh, so if I go to, let's see, um, where, where is this? I'm trying to remember, hang on. I wanna add back the PNL up here or the equity. So I'll add my equity there and I'll add my um, buying power. Let's see, oh, what is this? Hang on, sorry. Um, buying power, total buying power, okay. So I turned this into 50, 000, from 50,000 into 250,000, 254 already this month, which is crazy. This account's up 
I four times what I started with at the beginning of the month. Uh, I've been trading in my retirement accounts as well. So I haven't traded in this account every day. Uh, but on this stock, my maximum buying power, I don't have margin. It says 100%, which means I can't use any of this buying power here. I can only use my cash balance. And so today I had um, a couple of instances where I got that error message, cannot exceed buying power, cannot exceed buying power, cannot exceed buying power. Because I kept pressing shift one to keep adding into the breakout and not realizing what was going on initially. And I'm hitting my max buying power. So that means I put the full $254,000 uh, into this stock on some of my trades. So I was, was I being aggressive? Yes, I was being very aggressive. Um, but it paid off and my account's up. I mean, it's almost doubled in one day, which is insane. Absolutely insane. But this market is crazy. So Carve today, uh, what's interesting, UNOE yesterday and um, Carve, and I believe there was another one, um, headlines here of um, highlighting two black owned companies on Wall Street. Now black, now, black owned is kind of confusing because obviously you don't know from a shareholder perspective, for, you know, for a few minutes today, I was a shareholder. So I'm not exactly sure what they mean by own because it's are publicly traded companies, but um, maybe a black run uh, uh, or, or a black founder. I, I'm not exactly sure, but in any case, um, this has kind of been something I didn't expect to have happen that uh, the Black Lives Matter would apply to Black Stocks Matter, which has kind of been this trending um, thing that I've heard. So, I mean, I'm riding the momentum. I'm capitalizing on it. It doesn't make really a huge difference, but that's an interesting catalyst that I didn't really expect. We were trading uh, Chinese stocks with a, um, uh, this sort of Chinese catalyst last week and so it's not been it's not like we've never done that but the thing is with uh, Chinese stocks there are companies that operate in China and so you can actually type in here um, you know JFIN and you can see clearly it's a Chinese company and so part of that has been um, with what's going on with um, you know everything with COVID and um, you know trade negotiations and things like that so Chinese stocks have kind of got, did get a little bit of a surge in the last couple of weeks. And then yesterday we got this crazy move on UONE, which I didn't really attribute, I didn't know what the catalyst was. And then I saw after the fact that uh, that's what people were mentioning, that this is um, either has a black uh, founder, CEO, or something uh, along those lines. And I didn't get a chance to read all the details on it. So that created a little bit of, um, uh, became a little bit of a catalyst, which I mean, honestly, it's really cool to be able to say, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to buy uh, shares of a company that's uh, run by um, or, or has a black founder. Like that, that's awesome. And I, from a long term perspective, I really like the idea of um, ethical investing where you actually invest in companies where you believe in what they do and where you believe in how they treat their employees. The fact is on Wall Street, that's not always the company that's going to be the most profitable. And so from a from an investing standpoint where you're trying to really make money, ethical investing does not always align. Some of the colleges out there, I'm not sure, maybe Dartmouth or Yale, you know, they have these huge endowments and their students have petitioned um, to make sure that the company is, you know, divesting from uh, oil companies and things like that. You know, that they want the college to be investing in ethical companies. They've got so much money. And, you know, if you became kind of a trendsetter there, I'm only as a college with a multi-billion dollar endowment, only investing in ethical uh, companies, then ultimately the companies out there that are not as ethical in the way they treat their employees and things like that, they're going to start to feel the pressure that, wow, People actually value our, our stock less because, you know, our com our employees don't really like working here or, you know, we don't treat people well or whatever the case is. That hasn't so far been the case on Wall Street. But in any case, uh, I like the idea. And so that, I guess, was um, part of the catalyst on CARV today. Again, not something that I really expected. And I was a little concerned that there wasn't 
a more obvious catalyst like earnings or some type of news event. But again, I don't wanna overthink the market and say this isn't an opportunity because it clearly is. So we had multiple trades, uh, multiple opportunities on this beginning pre-market and then leading into regular trading hours as it squeezed from $8 to a high right now of $22.97. At this point, I'm gonna say I'm done trading it. I might be leaving the money on the table the same as I did yesterday on UNOE but are you owe any but um i am walking away with the biggest green day that i've ever had in my career this is absolutely outrageous it's it speaks to the volatility in the market this morning how many stocks did we have that were gapping over or up over 100 percent one two three four five stocks up over 100 percent imte was up 81 afh was up 72 percent. i mean this is insane so Carve was the one I was the most aggressive on. Uh, I did live trading stream on YouTube today. We had a, um, an issue in the chat room. Um, one of our servers was having a CPU issue. So uh, I streamed on YouTube for those of you guys who were having trouble getting into the room. That issue is fixed now, which is great. And sorry about that. Um, but so you can watch the YouTube video of kind of all the trades. There were, I don't even know how many. Um, if I look here, so this is my where I'm at on the year, $1 million in gross profit on the year. Um, so if I go to overview and I go to calendar, I can see uh, the number of trades I'm taking. So my previous record was 101 trades. I probably beat that today. I was, I was trading really aggressively. This has been the best month of my career. This right now is the best year of my career. And it kind of feels like it's been 10 years in the making for me to be able to capitalize on this type of market at this level. To be able to take 10, 15,000 share positions and be down potentially two or $3,000 and, and literally not care, not be upset by that at all. So I can let that position work and let it turn into a 15, 17, 18, 20, 25, $30,000 winner. It's been absolutely outrageous. And this is, again, as a result of me learning a new strategy during the 35% market drop, the market has been crazy. Uh, unemployment has probably brought a lot of new traders into the market. We've been hearing about Robinhood traders and things like that. I would remind you guys, um, you know, as always, don't trade with real money till you've proven profitability. I don't want to think of this as this is a market where seasoned traders are taking money out of the hands of newbies. I like to think I would like to think that beginner traders hopefully are making a little bit of money on some of this volatility because when you have a stock that goes up 500%, I know it can you can sometimes be the guy that loses on it or girl, and I've been that way before. But uh, at the same time, these are incredible opportunities. We saw some students posting their P&Ls in the chat room today, some big numbers. I was seeing lots of five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand, ten thousand $10,000 days. The biggest day I think I saw was $52,000 or something like that. And... I was trading for six or seven years. I mean, I just had a $50,000 day this year. That was the first time that ever happened to me. Now, part of that is also because I'm not as, um, I'm pretty risk adverse. I'm not as real, willing to take a lot of risk on trades. And I know absolutely there's people out there that are making more money than me right now. Day traders are capitalizing on this momentum. The market is insane. So. The people who are going to be making more than me are people who are typically trading 20, 30, 40,000 share positions and they buy on dips and they hold. They don't get in, get out, get in, get out. And when you have a stock like Carve that goes up $5 a share, that could be 200,000 bucks in one trade. This has 38 million shares of volume. Think about that. I mean, you could have easily bought 50,000 shares of this down here at 15 and held it for $5 a share. That's five dollars. That's two hundred fifty thousand dollars in one trade. All you need is the buying power and the guts to hold. And some people out there have it. And so I don't have a doubt in my mind that there's people out there that are making a lot more than me. I'm not the best trader out there. I'm okay, and I have gotten better as a result of a lot of experience and more practice. Right? Every day that I'm in the market, I gain more experience. The 35% uh, market drop taught me some new things. I learned some lessons from that, but I'm not the best trader out there by any means. There's people out there that are no doubt doing better than me. 
And so it's just this just goes to show how volatile the market is right now, that there's that there is a lot of opportunity. So I'm going to keep capitalizing on it. It would be crazy not to. Uh, you know, again, you think about traders who are trading during the dot com bubble or traders who are trading Bitcoin during the cryptocurrency bubble. They were kind of trading a once in a lifetime window. I mean, we've never seen anything like the dot com bubble again, really. I mean, I don't think. Uh, and, and the crypto bubble obviously was specific to crypto, but we haven't really seen anything like that since then. But what we're seeing in this market right now is as close as it gets, stocks making multi-day uh, moves, stocks making intraday 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 percent moves. So these are going to happen with or without you. And so the question is, do you have a strategy to try to capitalize on this opportunity? And I seem to have one that's working pretty well right now. This is, again, the same strategy that put me um, in the red in October. I think it was October that I had a red month. I had a red month, um, or I had, well, I can't remember, um, back, looking, think back, I had a red month last March. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's not like my strategy works all year round, 365 days a year. It's, there are going to be periods where it works really, really well, and there's gonna be periods where I'm gonna be the same guy six months from now doing a red month recap. I mean, it's not impossible by any means. Market, the markets change. And you have to be willing to adapt your strategy, and I am not always willing enough to do that. But in any case, uh, good job for those of you guys that um, nailed it today. And for those who are learning, keep studying. Watch that YouTube video today of, of live trading. And uh, of course, we'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. Watch list around 9, uh, 9 o'clock, between 9 and 9.30. And we'll see if we get something else. Um, I mean, I think that... Um, I think that for me, what I, you know, maybe lack in trading skill, like I'm not, not I, I you know, I've seen people out there and I'm like, wow, I can't believe that they had the courage to hold that overnight, you know, like something like AHPI or whatever it is, or, you know, someone that had the courage to take a trade like this and really hold it for like a 10 point move. And I'm just like, man, will I ever get there? Will I ever get to the place where I can have something like UONE and be holding for two or three or four ten dollars a share where i actually buy it right here at 25 and i don't sell it till 35. and i haven't had that happen before i mean i just i get scared i press the sell button and then i get back in uh, but i am um, a third generation teacher and i think that teaching is something that has sort of been in my in my blood and from a literal standpoint but also something that I've really admired. Like some of, the, some of my favorite people have been my really, really good teachers in life. And I, those be, they become role models. They become people that I, I aspire to be as good of a person as he is um, or as she is. And so I think that that desire to help people and to teach and the enjoyment that comes from explaining things that I do, that I really am passionate about, whether it's talking about the, you know, the, the koi pond that I have and someone that might be interested in the, the water chemistry and the things that I do on the pond to deal with algae and everything else. Or if it's talking about, um, you know, a 1969 Mustang or a 1961 Volkswagen. I mean, there, I have these little areas that I have a lot of interest. And this just happens to be one of those areas where there's a lot of people that are interested in learning about what I know. And it's really a pleasure to be able to teach you guys. And, um, you know, obviously it's not charity. I get paid to teach and I'm grateful for that. I feel incredibly fortunate. But um, I think that that is maybe something that I'm even better at than, uh, than trading, being able to explain my thought process. And just the fact is there's some people out there that are amazing traders but they can't articulate their thought process. It's hard to really understand what they're doing and you could probably never learn from them. They might make a lot of money and so they might appeal to you because you're like, wow, this person clearly makes a lot of money, but their communication skill and their ability to um, talk about what, how they trade is, is not very good. And that's sometimes the case with people who are naturally really, really good at something and they don't really know how, how they're naturally that good at it. So it's hard to explain. 
For me, I really struggled with trading and had to learn a lot through mistakes and hard lessons and things like that. And I think that that lends itself to being able to relate to people that uh, also struggle to get started. So uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Obviously, you know, not for everyone. I wish every single person in the world could be a profitable trader and that's never gonna happen. Uh, trading is gonna always be hard. It's gonna be for the small percentage that become successful, but for those that are on the journey and want to learn more, I, I certainly hope that I'm helping you. And we'll be back at it tomorrow with the watch list right around 9, uh, 9 a.m. Okay, so Warrior Pro students, we're going to jump over to uh, the Warrior Pro uh, classroom and start our summer school class today. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Help us hit 750,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button and stay tuned and check out some of my other awesome uploads right here on YouTube.